With increasing energy costs, many people are looking for alternatives to current heating and cooling methods. Solar energy is a popular option, and Florence is getting some solar houses. Roger Hanna reports. Passive solar heating is a term that many people have heard, but most people do not understand exactly what it involves. Florence is getting a few homes which will be heated in this way, and earlier today we took a look at some of these houses. The houses are located in the New Heritage subdivision, and realtor Hugh Lloyd talked about what passive solar heating means. He said that the sun shines on some sort of collector. In this case, that means barrels filled with water. These barrels are housed in a room much like a small greenhouse. As this water becomes heated, a pump transfers this heat into the house. The area where the barrels are located is covered with glass and must face south to make maximum use of the sun's heat. Realtor Hugh Lloyd said that this fact gives some houses a different location for the small greenhouse or solarium because of their orientation. He stressed the fact that the solarium can not only be attractive with plants in it, but would definitely save money. The estimate is approximately a 40% saving on heating cost and the federal government offers tax credits as well. There are 75 houses planned for the heritage subdivision, of which 25 will be passive solar homes. When this is finished, those barrels will be covered and the family that lives here will probably have many plants in this small greenhouse. They will also be able to save a great deal of money on their heating and cooling costs. I'm Roger Hanna, PD15 News. In what is being called the biggest cocaine bust ever in North Carolina, two men from New England have been arrested on drug charges and about 400 pounds of cocaine has been seized from a small plane in New Hanover County. The two men are Kessler Joseph Powell of Somerville, Massachusetts, and Robert Morris Rivard of Saco, Maine. Both are being held under bond of $900,000 apiece. The largest cocaine seizure in North Carolina prior to yesterday's was less than 10 pounds. Authorities say the 400 pounds of cocaine confiscated in yesterday's big bust has a street value of $100 million. The annual, annual uh, Sun Fun Festival ended today with the crowning of Miss Sun for 1981. Jim Dolan was in Myrtle Beach for the weekend of activities, and he has this report on what went on. In case there was any question about the reason people came to Myrtle Beach for any or all of the Sun Fun Festival, let us lay those questions to rest. The answer is not hard to discover. It lies in the very title of the festival, Sun and Fun. Mother Nature cooperated, providing plenty of the sunshine, not that there were not some clouds, because there were, but they provided protection for the gathering so that burns wouldn't ruin too many people's weekend. And as for the fun, well, that was plentiful from the jello jump on Friday that saw all manner of people jumping into an enormous vat of jello to the macho man contest that saw some likely and well not so likely candidates for mr america the parade on saturday brought a lot of people off the beach and onto ocean avenue to see an hour-long parade it had all of what you might expect with colorful floats and a number of pretty faces and well pretty faces local dignitaries also rode in the parade the crowd would rather have seen more pretty faces i guess and of course there were marching bands some from as far away as ohio though it was cloudy and overcast most of the hour-long march it did not rain on the Sun Fun Parade. The crowd would not permit it. Nobody was any too serious about the activities, not even the contestants in the Miss Bikini Wahini Beauty Contest held on Saturday, which a young lady from Florence won. There were several beauty contests held during the activities, and the final one was held today to end all the hoopla when they named Miss Sun Fun. But the real reason most of the people showed up was not for the festival, but for the same reason most people usually come to the Grand Strand, the beach. And it was still there, as you might expect, a little more crowded than usual, perhaps but no less attractive. This is Jim Dolan for PD15 News. While the Sun Fun Day's events are just about over and they all, of course, are spent outside, summer also involves some fun indoors, summer theater for one. While the actual product is a lot of fun, there's a scene designer at the University of South Carolina who has a pretty tough job this summer, Ann Hill reports. While other people are relaxing on vacation, actors and backstage crews at USC's Longstreet Theater are working long hours to get ready for the seven-week summer repertory season that stretches from June 17th to August 2nd. Designing and building the sets for four very different plays is a major challenge, and Isabel Vandervelde, who designed three of the productions, says that each one called for a special approach. Tennessee Williams' Glass Menagerie is a story about what one character remembers, so the set has an impressionistic feel. You only remember certain things. You remember what you want to remember. And so I don't, I'm not trying to put in every detail of what would be there in reality. The last meeting of the Knights of the White Magnolia is part of Preston Jones' Texas trilogy, set in Bradleyville, Texas, a place you can see and touch. 
Well, naturalism, I'd come and dump some red clay on the floor. So that, you know, I mean, dead flies hanging around and things like that. Every detail. Stuff, Stan, and Stella, she says, is a play for children, and audiences will see just how a theatrical production works with all the nuts and bolts showing. USC Summer Rep 81 opens with the rollicking musical Dames at Sea. Vandervelde is grateful she doesn't have to worry about the sets for that one. It's the responsibility of her colleague, Susan Gratch. This is Ann Hill reporting. Baseball, we've got the draft going on, and of course everybody wants to know, uh, is there going to be a strike, or, or what's the story? And we still don't know, and uh, a lot of it comes down to the decision of one man, a federal judge in Rochester, New York, and he said today, in so many words, that he needs a little bit more time. Last week, he, uh, we expected to hear last week something on that uh, request for an injunction, and we didn't get the answer then. He said possibly Monday, now he's saying a little bit later. But we'll talk about that a little bit and have lots more on sports coming up next. If you'd like to help preserve South Carolina's precious natural resources, write the South Carolina Wildlife Federation at P.O. Box 4186, Columbia, South Carolina, 29240. The South Carolina Wildlife Federation exists to keep our state and local governments responsible in the management of our forests, fields, and streams. To be a strong voice, we need everyone's support. Please join today. If you don't help, who will? Money. Doesn't it seem kind of funny how it runs right through your fingers? You say you put something aside, then you're on that same old ride, and it runs right through your fingers. If money runs right through your fingers, join the payroll savings plan and buy U.S. savings bonds. A sure way to save the dough that runs right through your fingers. Don't let it run through your fingers. Take stock in America. Buy bonds.